Welcome to another one of Miss Kendrick's Read Alouds. Today I will be reading one of you guys' favorite information books, and it's from the series What If You Had What If You Had Animal Hair. So um, the author of this book is Sandra Markle. The illustrator is Howard McWilliams. And I want you guys to take a second and think about what the author does. What does the author do? Boom, good. What about the illustrator? What does the illustrator do? Draws the pictures. Good job, just checking to make sure you guys are remembering everything I taught you this school year. Okay, What If You Had Animal Hair by Sandra Markle. What if one day when you woke up, the hair on your head wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's hair grew instead? Polar bears. A polar bear has a double coat of hair to keep it warm. There's a woolly undercoat close to the bear's skin. Above that is a top coat made of six inch long stiff oil coated hairs. A polar bear's hair looks as white as arctic snow because the top coat hairs are hollow and clear. They reflect the light just like snow. Fact. Each May or June, a polar bear sheds its hair and grows a whole new coat in less than a month. And if you have polar bear hair, your head could play outdoors in cold, wet weather and never need a hat. Reindeer. A reindeer has a double coat too. It also has a lot of hair, as many as 5,000 outer hairs per square inch of skin. Each long, stiff outer hair has a hollow core. These hairs trap up air. In addition to keeping the reindeer warm, its hair helps this heavy animal float in the water. Fact. A reindeer's hollow hairs keep its body heat from escaping. In fact, a reindeer lies on the ground. The snow will not melt up under it. If you had reindeer hair, swimming would always be easy even in the roughest of waters. Musk ox. A musk ox has the longest hair of any wild animal. Some hairs are as long as two feet. That means if I put both of my feet together, the hair is that long. Its shaggy coat hangs down to its hooves. This coat is also double thick and so tough it acts like a suit of armor. Fact. Each spring, a musk ox sheds its woolly undercoat as much as seven pounds of hair. If you had musk ox hair, you could play outside day or night, in winter or summer, without worrying about frostbite, sunburn, or bug bites. Oryx. A scimitar horn oryx has hair that is just right for its African desert home. The oryx's pale colored coat reflects sunlight and keeps it from overheating. The hairs are also so short that any cool breeze easily reaches its skin. Fact: Oryx calves are brown with solid yellow coats. They develop distinctive markings and pale white and red coats as they grow up. If you had scimitar horn oryx hair, you'd never need a comb or brush. Even if you rolled on the ground, your hair would be too short to tangle or collect dirt. Lion. A male lion has a mane, long thick hair on the back of its head, neck, and shoulders. When it comes to having a mane, size matters. Scientists learn that female lions called lionesses prefer males with big manes. That could be because the healthiest males usually have the largest manes. Fact. A lion's mane needs regular cleaning and grooming. Luckily, a group of lions called a pride will groom one another. These big cats have a built-in comb through their rough tongues. If you had a lion's mane, you'd stand out in a crowd. You'd look big and bold. Zebra. A zebra's hair grows in black and white stripes. These stripes help it to stay safe. Whether standing still or running, zebras usually stick together in a herd. Seeing so many stripes confuses hunters such as lions and hyenas. Fact: A zebra's hair shows if they are healthy or sick. The short hair on a healthy zebra's mane stands up straight. A sick zebra's mane flops over to the side. 
If you had zebra hair, you wouldn't have to work at being one of a kind. Each zebra has a stripe pattern that is completely unique. Three-toed sloth. A three-toed sloth's hair often looks green because little plants called algae grow all over it. Sloths live in damp rainforests and rarely move, making their bodies a good place for algae to live. However, having green hair isn't a bad thing. Green hair helps sloths blend into their homes in the treetops and hide from predators such as jaguars and harpy eagles. Fact. Three-toed sloths spend most of their lives upside down so that their hair grows differently than other hairy animals. When a three-toed sloth hangs upside down, its hair falls over its body. So even upside down, the sloth's hair keeps its skin dry when it rains. If you had three-toed sloth hair, you'd never be alone. Because of the algae, your hair would be home to many different kinds of harmless insects. Arctic Fox. An Arctic Fox's hair is snow white in winter. Each hair is also fat, helping make its coat thick and warm. As the days grow longer and heat up, an Arctic Fox sheds its wintertime hair and grows a new brown coat. Now each hair is skinny, helping make its coat thin and helping the fox from overheating. Besides, staying comfortable, changing its coat keeps an Arctic Fox perfectly colored to sneak up on prey such as lemmings and voles. Fact. When getting ready for winter, Arctic foxes also grow long hair between their toes and on the soles of their feet. Their furry feet help them run on ice without slipping. If you had Arctic fox hair, you'd never get tired of hair color because it would change with the seasons. Giant Pangolin. A giant pangolin's body is covered with scales, which consist of the same substance as hair. Like hair, the scales are made of tough keratin and grow out of skin. A giant pangolin's scales also start small and grow longer until at last they fall out. New scales grow in to replace the old ones that are lost. Fact: The back edges of a giant pangolin's scale-like hairs are razor sharp, so if it's attacked, a giant pangolin just curls up tight to stay safe. If you had a giant pangolin scales, you wouldn't need to put on a helmet to ride your bike. Porcupine. A porcupine has a normal coat, but it also has special hairs too called quills. Quills are stiff, needle-like hairs. If attacked, barbs on the end of each quill poke into the enemy's skin. Then, even when they separate, the porcupine's quills stay stuck in the enemy. Fact: A porcupine's skin gives off a fatty substance that coats each quill. This fatty substance contains a germ-killing chemical. So, if a porcupine accidentally pokes itself, it won't get an infection. If you had a porcupine's quills, bullies would never, ever, ever ever, 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 ever bother you. Star-nosed mole. A star-nosed mole's hair, unlike most animal hair, can lie flat in any direction. Pushed forward, sideways, or straight back, its hair will never stick up. It will always lie flat against its body. This lets a star-nosed mole slip through easily in its underground tunnels, whether it's going forward or backing up. Fact: A star-nosed mole has comb-like claws to spread oil through its hair. That makes its coat waterproof. That's important since it lives in damp towel tunnels. If you had star-nosed mole hair, your hair would stay put whatever direction you comb it. Wild animal hair could be cool for a while, but you don't use your hair to stay afloat or confuse predators. You don't need your hair to change with the seasons be a helmet or lie flat in any direction. And you'll never defend yourself with your hair, no matter what. So if you could keep wild animal hair for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? Luckily, you don't have to choose. 
The hair that grows on top of your head may look wild from time to time, but it will always be people hair. It will be what you need to protect your head from heat, chills, and bumps, and make you look your best when it's clean and brushed. That's it for now. Bye-bye. Until next time.